Welcome to Landmark Theater's Q&A podcast. In this podcast, you will hear a discussion with director-co-writer Dana Nachman and co-writer Kurt Kenny from the film Bad Kid Begins, moderated by film critic Claudia Pugh, recorded at the Landmark West LA. Thank you. How is he now? How is Miles? He is in remission. He is taking swim lessons this summer. I just talked to his mom last night. Um, he just finished first grade. He played Little League in the spring, and he's doing great. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Most important question. <laughs> Absolutely. So how did you get involved with it? Obviously, you heard about it, and this was as it was going on as well as after. How did you get involved with the whole production? So it's an, my most embarrassing question, but I missed the entire thing. I wasn't even one of the two billion people who followed it that day. It's mortifying. I was editing something else, and I wasn't on social media. Um, but later that the next day, I had heard about it, and I thought, oh, that would have been such an amazing documentary. Why did all those people come out to cheer him on? Um, and I kind of forgot about it. And a week later, um, my friend, who is the producer of this movie, she, I, she's a journalist. I said, what are you working on? She says, oh, I'm trying to get an interview with the Bat Kid. And I said, oh, that would have been so great. And she goes, oh, I can ask Make-A-Wish if they'll meet with us. And the next day, we were at 9 a.m., we were in their office. And it turned out several people had reached out to them before, but they were so inundated with doing the wish that sure. they couldn't deal with the film being made. Um, and at the end of that meeting, I said, you didn't happen to shoot it, did you? And they said, oh, yeah, we had a guy shooting it with five cameras to make a fundraising video for us wow. so you to show at our, our gala. Yeah, so we had that footage. Um, my original thought going into that meeting was maybe I would crowdsource the footage because obviously there were so many people there shooting that day. Right. But that would have been bad for my friend Kurt, who's here. <laughs> very, very horrible. Kurt, you want to, oh, that's, you want to raise your hand? Yay, Kurt! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so you co-wrote it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it feels like you should be up here as well, but... Um. Yes. <laughs> Can you come up? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> so oh, we'll ask you how you got involved in it as well. Uh, she called me. Or actually, she emailed me. <laughs> uh, July 1st, last year. Yeah. Which was, uh, I can't believe a year ago at this time, I had no idea this was about to take over my life. It's pretty funny. <laughs> so, had you, uh, Dana, had you worked, had you talked to Make a Wish people before? Did you have any kind of connection with no, them? No, I had none. And I, the only connection I had was I had a friend um, from my old job who was a wish grantor. And I always thought, oh, she's such a saint. It would be too sad. I could never do that. Um, because I was under the misconception that the kids always died. Um, mm. And I think a lot of people are actually think that of Make-A-Wish. And I think it used to be the case. But now that there's been 80%, so... 80% they Yes, 80% survive, yeah. survive because there's been so many um, advancements in treatment that it's a different thing now. And I look at Miles's wish and others that this is the end of treatment and a, a beginning of a new chapter. So I think that's what it had for him and, and a lot of others. I, want the, I love the idea. I keep wondering what his memories will be of all of I this. always think that, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he still thinks that he saved Gotham and that EJ is Batman. And he, he kind of knows that Mike's not the penguin. <laughs> so, you know, I That's think like right. all kids, he picks and chooses what he... And what the Riddler's not in his life at all. No, <laughs> the Riddler was the only actor, like professional actor in the day who was hired for that. Um, so he wasn't, he ha isn't around as much as the rest of oh, us. Oh. Thank you. I'm sorry, I did this sort of impromptu. Yes, I hope nice. That's good. Nice um, so you interspersed, I love the way you did the comic book kind of graphic novel visuals in there. How did that idea come? I mean, it's, kind of, it's a great idea. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that came to me really very quickly, and even the first treatment I wrote about it, because number one, we weren't there going through his treatment, so that had to be a workaround. But number two, I really wanted this film to be accessible to children and to people who can't deal with sad, sick children like me, and I thought that this would um, kind of kind of temper the blow a little bit, although I think the part when Nick um, goes on the gurney and, and Miles is strapped to him is oh. like the most heartbreaking thing and maybe even worse in animation. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> you can't get around that being horrific. I, I thought that was incredibly moving to see yeah. that. Because yeah. you, you never think about a parent no, doing that. No, I never but. thought of that. And, uh, and I actually didn't even know that uh, when you get di a kid like like Miles's age gets diagnosed with leukemia, that they have to be airlifted right away, and I didn't know that. I did not know that either. Yeah. yeah. So there's so much you probably researched and learned. Yeah. So when you you actually interviewed him, obviously, and his parents, how much after the experience was that that you talked to them? That was um, in late May, 
<laughs> you weren't, you weren't <laughs> even <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think late May, early June. Well, um, I, I think it I think it might because I went over the tape, you know, the not the tapes. Nobody uses tapes anymore. Sorry, your chips law. I think it was late April, early May, something like that. I could be wrong, but yeah, but I wasn't there, so yeah. <laughs> so it was like six months afterwards. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. We did a lot of. You saw him. Pl- he he's not a boy of many words. He's actually very very quiet. Right. Um. He's he's a very cool kid. Um. But he's not somebody who you would get much out of with an interview. So we just played with him a lot on the floor and. Right. And um, that's how we got some of that footage. And it looks like he stayed buddies with EJ. Does that is that kind of an ongoing? Thing? Yes, it is. I mean, they uh, EJ unfortunately just moved to London like oh. last week, wow. so that's gonna um, get in the way a little bit. But yeah, I mean, he, I mean, it's kind of in a way that if you th- had a friend that you thought was was Batman, that you he might not be around all the time. Right. That's <laughs> so so yeah, like yeah, he loves too. him, and they you know they have a, a mutual affection. All the families. I think everybody in the film and now our whole crew are we're all really close with the family and. That's and great. they're amazing, yeah. So the event itself swelled to just ridiculous proportions. And I'm sure you have your theories. I mean, there are a lot of people who give their opinions, but you have your theories as to why it touched so many people in so many ways, from people in the Philippines to Norway to the president to every other person. People got on, on planes and, and came out. What is it exactly that resonated so much with all of us, do you think? Um, I, I mean, I think a lot of people have opinions, so I'll say my opinion, and then you can say your opinion, but um, I think that we, most people want to live in a childlike way and don't have the opportunities to do so, and I know, I know that for me, I've always been very um, attracted to that kind of side of, of life, um, and this gave people an opportunity who don't seek it out um, often to just come down from their offices or, or you know, they had school school teachers who brought their classes in. It just gave an opportunity to do something um, and really in the guise of, um, of community service. But really, I think it helped the people themselves um, as much, if not more, than Miles. Because I think Miles would have liked that just as much. if He, didn't, he doesn't know the difference between 200 and 25,000. He right. certainly doesn't know anything about online. I mean, all that rest of that had no you know, effect on him. So I think it helped the people there more than it helped Miles. I kept seeing that there was a, a businessman standing there like with his briefcase. <laughs> very much like, I was, I love that. Oh, do you? We, we intentionally, we intentionally, I intentionally put that shot on when, when you talked about the rotted grown-up souls. Like, that's our, that's our poster guy. Yeah. I don't know who he was. I, I apologize. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> just this look. Um, I, for me, I don't know the theories. I mean, it's all just conjecture. Um, I think it's like, you know, Chris Taylor say, uh, says at the end about this sense of people want to have an excuse to play, and this started happening, and then it snowballed, and then it became a happening that it was like, hey, let's join in. Um, the thing that affected me maybe the most about the whole thing was um, the things that like uh, Sue says about like leaving her stuff on the corner and nobody touching it, yes. and the police officers saying that like it was the first time they'd done crowd control and people were oh yeah sure what do you need, yes. and like Teresa saying it was the first time that they'd been there with that many people and people were nice to each other, and I thought about why is that and you know this is the the question because it's like we're clearly capable of treating each other that nicely as we can see here why don't we every mm-hmm. day, and I think it's because everybody under everybody. N- knew where everyone else was coming from. They all knew why they were there. They're all there um, for the same reason. It's like when you're, you know, on the subway or something, or not here, but, you know, <laughs> but um, that you're sitting next to somebody. You don't know what's going on with them. You don't know why they're there, da, 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 and you're in your own world, whereas here everyone knew everyone else's motivation, and they were all here for this child. So maybe it's, it's kind of a lesson in empathy for me, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I would say like a parade or like being at a concert or a game or something, you're all kind of there with the same goal. And then I think when you put a child who is sick, things in perspective. Yeah, everybody feels, yeah, it really does. The, I love the way he put it. He said, um, we all like to play and we all forget to play. So um, I thought it was a great quote. Definitely. He was pretty good, Chris right. Taylor. He was awesome. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did Hans Zimmer get involved? He um, heard about it. I think his the head of his philanthropy department heard about it. He, he she brought it to him. He made that iPhone video for Miles as the theme. And I keep forgetting every day. I keep forgetting to ask Natalie. I don't think that they ever saw it until the film, because I think it, I think it got lost in the shuffle oh. um, of all you know because they were so inundated. And so sure. I think you know he sent it just to say let let's do some score for this big event. Um, but I don't think anybody saw it until until now. So it was a very nice gesture. Yes. And, and he yeah. was. He was lovely to interview and hang out with, and it's great. great. Yeah. So, um, his parents, Natalie and I forgot the Nick. name, Nick. He's a farmer. They live in a small town, and they do this 
amazing thing. I mean, how, how has it, I know they said they want to keep their son from being conceded and, you know, beyond throwing the ball out at the Giants game, but how have they kind of stayed it, They're kind of amazing. Like, so just to give you a perspective of where they live, you go all the way up to the Oregon border and then go east like an hour and a half. It's so remote. Like, it, you couldn't be in a better spot if you didn't want this, the hoopla of this to follow you. Like, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's a real undertaking when you want to go see them. We just hung out with them, my kids and I, um, on my kids' spring break, and it was a road trip. Um, so, and I live in San Francisco. I don't even live here. So, um, so really, they just live a very quiet life. Um, they actually were going to come to the premiere, which I was shocked about. They were going to come in San Francisco this week, and then, um, but we weren't going to do any red carpet with them. It was going to be very, you know, this, they were going to sit in the audience. Um, and then it rained a couple weeks ago, and that put back Nick's farming schedule, and they couldn't come. So, so because he has to, I don't know, wait. I don't know about the farming, but he had to wait till the land was dry enough to plant, or I don't know. Yeah, he said he was a fourth generation farmer. Yeah, yeah. So they, when they area. say they don't want to be in the limelight, they really mean it. And the reason why they agreed to do this film was because they knew that the proceeds were going to go to charity, and that, um, and that it was going to help other people. Now, I think I read somewhere that this is going to be made into a feature film with Julia Roberts somehow attached to it. Yes, that is the rumor. Yeah. That's the rumor. Okay. <laughs> so they haven't told you. No, no, no. It, it, okay. it is in the works. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So she would play Patricia's character, I'm yes. guessing. Yes. Okay. Somebody wrote in the hometown paper of, of Nick and Natalie's that they were going to play Natalie, oh. and then that started a whole thing. So they have one <laughs> news newspaper there. So it's just, you know, it's not, and yeah. they're, they're not on social media a lot. So, But that did come in the local paper, and that caused them a little... Something. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of hoopla. Yeah. Um, it, the whole idea of Make a Wish, too, is just, I've known about it, but I never realized they got that elaborate. And that, I mean, it just seemed like it, you know, with involving the opera and involving all those different people. It's, and of course it grew, but is this, this must be the hugest thing they've ever done. Um, I think so, yes. I mean, and, and I think most of their wishes, like I've heard, I, I'm with Patricia a lot doing doing press on this, so I've heard her answers to a lot of things. Um, but she said that um, people say, oh, how are you going to one-up this one? And she's like, we don't want to one-up this one. <laughs> we didn't, like this was definitely, as you saw, not their intention. Right. Um, they just wanted a nice crowd. And the way I look at the whole thing about that is there was one one section of this wish that was for Miles, and then there was a whole other section of the wish for, for all the rest of us right. to like right. have us be the <laughs> spectacle. But their wishes are mostly private. Um, there's several public wishes a year, right. like Cassandra's that you the saw singer, in there. Yeah. Like they would do ones like that. So, but they're very rarely. Like most of them are wishes to go somewhere, like because most of them don't have family well, vacations. I noticed the second wish was Disneyland. Yes, it was. Yeah. And I think <laughs> I, I heard the other day. I think 50 or 60 percent are Disneyland. So that checks off a whole lot. <laughs> you know, and they get very. They're good at that. Um, and so <laughs> most of the other ones are not. And there are a lot of like shopping sprees at Toys R Us, stuff like that. So right. I think when they have an opportunity to get really creative, which Patricia obviously relished in that and this yes. one this is you know why and I think it was just this perfect storm of events that made it go big I mean I, I wouldn't think there would be another one quite like that yeah yeah. Mike Jutan. Oh, yeah. Mike, Mike oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did they ever feel at any point that maybe this was going to be too much? Did they ever at some point think we sh we've got to pull this back we got to scale it back? Or? Oh yeah I mean for sure I think they like when she put up the RSVP I mean I don't think they were ever even close to pulling it but they thought about it. Um, and then I think they had contingency plans B, C, D, and E set out. Um, and mainly that they would just continue on in the hotel room if Miles didn't want to do it. Right. And um, and they would, you know, have EJ go out alone for the masses. And have him look at <laughs> Yeah, which window, maybe would have caused some yeah. other trouble. But like, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think they were worried. I wondered about that when he said he was tired at lunch. I thought, and, and someone mentioned, I think it was EJ, you know, if he's tired and he doesn't want to go, then that's, we're kind of done. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. I mean, they were gonna, they were definitely gonna stop his part of it. But I think his parents wanted to have it go, and they knew what his capability was. And yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. He is so. There's everybody is so much fun to watch. You know, the other players, EJ and everybody. But it's so something about Miles. He's got. I think because of his innocence and and his sort of naturalness, you're just sort of brought. He was. He's just. A kid, and you feel a real connection to him, and just watching his face. And oh yeah, like you hang on every expression. Face. Yeah, and I think the thing about Miles too is he doesn't give it all away like some people do. <laughs> like me, I'm like <laughs> effusive, and he's just not like that. So you, you know, he's not gonna. I mean, there's a couple shots there. I think when he sees his mom right in the burger bar, he's yeah, like he's yeah. like gleaming, yes. and um, you know, when he saves Lucille and he gets his gets the um, the umbrella, like he's gleaming. You know, right. but the other times he's pretty like he takes it all in. He's an observer. 
Yeah. And you had a lot of footage to choose from. Were there any extra things that you wish you'd been able to fit in or? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Uh, I, I, my first cut actually was two minutes shorter than this. Ah. <laughs> so we, 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 yeah, yeah, that was the thing. I tend to pace things very fast. Um, it's also, speaking of like Miles not giving much away, one of the things that I found very amusing that you know didn't end up in the movie, but is when you were shooting him on the floor with Charlie, your son, um, that you would ask him questions and he was just totally ignoring you. Like you were trying to sort of interview him about being back. Like, what was it like? And he's like, uh, Charlie, it was, uh, let me get the, do you have the action figure? And he just had no interest in talking about it whatsoever. It was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, he How did old not. was his little brother? Oh, he's so cute. Then he was like, I want to say like 18 months, um, or maybe like a little closer to two years, but oh my God, is he so cute. So cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's the opposite. He's very, you know, gregarious and just a, like an extrovert, whereas Miles, actually Natalie and I were talking about it last night for some reason, I don't remember why, but you know, she said, oh, Miles is much more like her, and you can see that she's... Quiet Quieter, and shy, yeah. and and Nick's more. I mean, he actually. When, last time I was at his house, they sh they showed us a movie he made in high school called Dark Mullet. <laughs> where he, it was, oh yeah, Dark Mullet. You gotta see Dark. We should have this. Oh, Dark Mullet. It was good. My kids still ask me, "Can we please watch Dark Mullet?" <laughs> oh, it was good. It was, was the good. Dark Knight meets. Uh, it was a guy Joe who had hair, and they had to they cut it to make a mullet. I don't know. It was. He was, it was a superhero movie, but yeah. That's so he, so he had acting aspirations ah. in Tully Lake. Yeah. That's so funny. I didn't tell you that. I, no, I had no oh, idea. I thought I told you about awesome. it. We got to redo it now. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your background, both of your backgrounds in terms of filmmaking? Um, I started as a, a television journalist, um, and I moved into documentary filmmaking um, in two, about 2008 with my first film, Witch Hunt. Um, and then I did a couple others, and I met... Uh, Kurt, when he did uh, Dear Zachary and I did Witch Hunt, and they both went to MSNBC, and that's okay. how we met. Yeah, we had the same sales rep <laughs> who introduced us. Uh, is, is Josh Braun here? Dan's here. Is Dan here? Maybe not. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good so to yeah, see you. Anybody else connected? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Oh, okay, you connected hey. then. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, what was the question? Background. Uh, yeah, background. Yeah, um, I was one of those weird kids who started making movies very young with Super 8 and VHS. Uh, I went to film school at USC, double majored in film production and music, and just started making stuff like thereafter. Steve some Spielberg. fiction, some documentary, depends when you catch me. So, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything. So you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And, and what specifically attracted you? I know she called you and you said yes, but sure. what was it about this project that... You wanted to be the no guy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else was the yes person. Everyone's yeah. a yes hand. I would have been the no but. No. Um, that would have been great. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, honestly, for me, when I, when she, I asked her what it's about and she said Bat Kid... And I remember, oh yeah, I remember seeing a Facebook post, a friend of mine that day, but I didn't really know much about it. And I was reading up on it, and I, you know, the first thing I thought is, oh, this is a real life Frank Capra movie. This is It's a Wonderful Life with Real People. And <laughs> if anyone who knows anything about me, like I'm like Frank Capra's biggest fan and everything. So it's like everything I do is some sort of a riff on It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> so uh, that, and then when I got the footage uh, and looked at it, I also said, one other thing I said, oh, this is a this is a buddy movie. You know, it's EJ and Miles, and like, you've heard me say this a million times, but like we meet Miles, we meet EJ, we track them separately. They meet the night before in this sort of magical circus center uh, training camp and then they have this adventure together and then the whole movie's a journey to the line it's like I have a new little brother but that was how I thought of it and also forgotten to looking at it again tonight too it's like oh it is a heist movie too you know it's like the first half is like you know like Ocean's Eleven they're plotting the heist and the second <laughs> half is executing and, right, you know, so, right. <laughs> so those are the genre boxes I put it in my head <laughs> I love that so how do you write a documentary? I mean, how do you, it's, it's more like what you select from what everybody says, or I'm, I'm curious So we about might that. do it differently. We probably do, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, it started out that I wrote a script, um, which I had wrote even before Kurt came on. I was yep. tweaking it. Um, I gave it to him along with the footage, all the footage, and he proceeded to watch every frame of the footage, which was no small undertaking. <laughs> um, and then he took his rendition of my script and put it together and that's how we did it this time um and then we battled out a little bit but mostly <laughs> not at all and and here you have it how do you do you is that how you usually do it or not? well it's different with my fiction work you know you write it you know you have to you know that's the thing uh, with documentary i tend to just scribble notes down like okay i want this to go here and that to go here and then i'll start moving 
and just sort of writing with the pieces, if you will, like just trying to, it's a difficult thing trying to get your point across with somebody else's already existing words. You know, you know what you want to say, but yeah. you gotta, you know, and try to like get the people talking to each other, like whether it's uh, EJ asking Mike, hey, what are you doing, you know, November 15th, and kind of trying to create a conversation with them back and forth. I pull out my phone and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I just kind of scribble notes down and then, you know, how I think maybe this, and I try it in actuality, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and then change around. So it's very messy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it seems like it works beautifully. The ed- I really like the editing of it, too, because I mean, you, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that it was fun. <laughs> so, what was the hardest thing about it for you, Dana? Mine was, um, I promised Patricia, so I knew she had three other people who had come to her, and I was pretty, comp- like, you know, got my competitive hackles up. I wanted to be the one that she chose, and so she said, um, I'd really like to have it done on the one-year anniversary. I was like, oh, sure, sure, no problem, and so I had never done a movie in less than three to four years, so to have it done in 11 months, even though I said it was no problem, it, it was going to be <laughs> tough. Um, we did it. Um, we didn't have a final done by then, but enough that... I was. I said, you know, if you could not really show it to very many people, that would be great. You know, but you could have it to look at. So I felt like I was holding my end of the bargain. But it was done soon after. I mean, it, we finished it um, probably to go to post in in December. So it wasn't that far off. But she saw a cut. So that was the hardest. It was day and night working. Um, I was. Uh, fortunate to have two editors fall through before Kurt got on, on board, so that was amazing. Fortunate. Yeah, um, but at the time it didn't feel that fortunate. It yes. felt very desperate, and I didn't know that Kurt would even consider editing someone's movie, so I was just thrilled. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was that. It was, it was really just the rush of it. But other than that, it was such a beautiful film, and talking to all the people in the film and being with them for, I mean, you know, it's the kind of project you just don't want to end, because everybody's more lovely than the person before. What did you come away with? I mean, did you, you know, you were talking talking about people having the capacity to be, you know, to be good and kind. And um, did you come away with sort of a renewed faith in humanity or did you come away? What, or I always had like faith that? in humanity. Yeah. You know, I'm not a cynical person. Um, I think it reminded me, um, somebody asked me today in, in an interview I did about if it changed San Francisco. Um, and I don't think it changed San Francisco at all. I think San Francisco always had that. And it reminded me about that because I've lived there for 17 years. Um, and so it really reminded me the capacity of San Francisco. Um, and, you know, and I think it just remind, you know, it shows what happens when communities come together in something and it happens so rarely. So, yeah. yeah. What about you? Well, I remember. Um, well, you're talking about the hardest thing was the schedule, definitely. <laughs> but um, but one of my favorite memories of working on this actually is in August, I went up to the Bay Area and you invited me along to go shoot at um, Industrial Light and Magic. We shot Mike at work and then we went to Make-A-Wish and shot uh, Teresa and Jen at work and everything. And then we wanted to wait out the traffic before going back to San Jose and everything. So we stayed up in the city and had dinner. And I remember sitting there that evening, looking around the table, and there was you and your husband and Jake, who is officially the intern, but he's like, like he's shot some of the best stuff in the movie. I mean, he's a fantastic cameraman, great guy. Um, Bart, another cameraman that was there. I was just like, and, and having met these amazing people that day, I'm like, I am so glad I said yes to this movie. These people are awesome, and this is just like, I'm so happy I'm sitting here right now at this dinner table. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite memories from working on this. That's so. a great memory. <laughs> What was the um, successes, like starting from the festival circuit and how to get distribution and the fact that it's a project of this scope? Yeah. um, Well, we applied to Slamdance and Sundance at the same time, and um, we got into Slamdance and then hadn't heard about Sundance, and we found out that we did not get into Sundance. That was sad, but I don't think anybody ever expects to get into Sundance, um, and they wrote us very nice notes uh, talking about how much they liked it, so that was was good enough. (laughs) Um, But Slamdance was amazing, and then after that... um, you know, we just kind of took any, like we were kind of of the philosophy, we were just gonna take anybody who who was interested in our film. We didn't wanna play any games with this film. It just was, it didn't feel like that. Um, you know, so we were gonna take Slam Dance before we went, we checked out at other bigger places, but we, because we, what was it, a bird in the hand, you know? And, yeah, we, and, we, yeah, and they absolutely. loved it. And we, our philosophy really was let's find the people who love this film and play it for the people who love it. And so we continued to do that. It went to Ashland, a place that I've always wanted to to screen, oh, and yeah. Dallas, and um, a few others, amazing. 
Oh, Cinequest. It was the opening right. night at Cinequest. You won the Rogue Creamery Award. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and at Cinequest, it played, I live about five minutes from Cinequest, which is in San Jose, and it played to like 1,200 people, and it was like a really glorious night. So we just did whatever seemed happy and positive and tried to not play the usual games we have to play. Um, and then we were nervous, of course, about distribution. It, was, it felt very... Um, nerve-wracking, um, and luckily uh, New Line loved it that day and, and wanted to wanted to buy it. So it was a very lucky, it was not all films end up like this, as both <laughs> yeah, of us know. That is very lucky. Been, uh, this is the fastest thing I've ever been involved with in that way. I mean, like, like uh, we were just saying uh, Wednesday, we were in San Francisco for the premiere, it was the 24th. And the number 24 seems to be coming up a lot with this movie, I've just noticed this, because January 24th was our premiere at Slamdance. February 24th was opening night of Cinequest, which is also my hometown festival as well, too. And then the premiere this week was, you know, June 24th. And like, five months ago today was our premiere, and we're opening. That is insane. That's so fast. And then as far as the wide rollout, I believe July 24th is like... Wow. So I, I was like, what's up with the number 24 in this movie? It's just interesting. Numerology. <laughs> Did you self-finance it, by the way, initially? Um, no, I got a an investor who was actually... This is another great Goodwill story. Um, a friend of mine um, who I met on jury duty in 1999, Rob. Rob and I, uh, we were talking one day, and he said, how's things going? I said, oh, my other my movie before this was took me five years to do. It was just a real difficult movie just from finding the financing to making it. it was about toxic chemicals that are bad for our health called the human experiment it's a very dark and serious movie and it was just hard beginning to end and so I was, ta I was complaining to my friend Rob about how hard it was and the next uh, three days later he calls back he said Dana I have a friend who who likes to invest in movies would you like to meet with him and I thought it was gonna be about the human experiment and we meet um, and he says oh no I'm interested in Bat Kid can you send me your films you've done and your budget so I did, and he texts on Friday night. He's like, I'm watching Witch Hunt, which was my first movie. He's like, this is amazing. I was like, okay, well, that's a good sign. And then we meet for coffee the next week, and he says, okay, I'm going to fund your film. And I was like, okay, are you going to fund, like, 25000 of it or what? And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to fund the whole thing. Wow. So you that was, yeah, long. so that happened. And then I wanted to raise a bit more um, for music licensing. So I did a crowdfunding um, campaign for that, for, for animations and music licensing, and I did that in July. So did you do the animation yourself then, or you had you no, had no, animated no, no, doing? yeah. yeah. Um, Rob Simmons, who's a very talented um, animator, who is so lovely. I'm always a little scared of animators because they, you know, it costs X dollars per se second or half a second, and yeah, it's it's super it's hard. Um, but he was just he. One of my favorite stories about him was when he. Um, Mike Jutan, who, who's the rainmaker of all things, the, pengu <laughs> the penguin. He sent a note out to Pixar, DreamWorks, and. And, I, yeah, and Lucasfilm saying, hey, I'm working on this project. We need an animator. It's a documentary, so it's a documentary rate. Um, and uh, Rob had gotten hold of that from a friend. He worked at a gaming place, um, 2K Games. But he got a hold of it, and he said, when he called me, he said, I talked this over with my wife. She and I, we have two young sons. We think it's a worthy project. I'd love to meet with you. And I just love the way he approached Aww. that, and that's how he told me. And so we met, and we totally hit it off, and we looked at sketches together of things that we liked, and he did a killer job. And actually, one of the things was we, we added some at the end, and he just added it, no problem. It wasn't like, you know, he was just great. He was asking if they were concerned about the, the focus drifting away from Miles because in the middle when there's all that build up, the focus kind of shifts to the procedure of it all as opposed to being on Miles. Yeah, maybe we have two different answers. But yeah, I definitely thought about that. Um, but at some point in the making of it, I realized that I di actually didn't think the movie was about Miles. Um, and when I had that epiphany, I thought the movie, you know, he was this ma amazing inciting incident of the, you know, his wish was of the of the movie. But I really thought it was a movie about the steamrolling and the people coming together for Miles. So I, I felt that if we could just do it in a pace, which I know Kirk can, can achieve, um, that we can keep it going and interesting, um, that it would be okay not to have Miles in that part because he wouldn't have known about any of those you know, behind the scenes, how the puppet strings were moving anyway. But do you have another? Yeah, oh, no, I, I think um, I tried to, like, you know, we cross-cut back to the family at one point, you know, like, oh, there's going to be 11,000 people there, and he's shy, and we kind of drop him back in there. But you're right that he goes away for a while, but there's really nothing else to cover with him in that period. It's like you could cut back to him, and you'd be, like, looking at your watch because there's nothing happening. It's just him at home <laughs> waiting for the wish. So there wasn't much choice, really. You mentioned that the... 
Sure. So the film, our proceeds, our share of the proceeds are going to the Bat Kid Fund, which um, Patricia set up, which goes to five San Francisco charities. It's um, the most of it goes to Make a Wish in the Greater Bay Area, and then other um, organizations that were involved in the day, including the Toy Drive for um, for the fire department and camps put through through the through the police department, and so they're they're all San Francisco charities that had something to do with the day. So we hope it makes millions for them. <laughs> that would be great. Or oh, the couple that, that paid for the hundred and five thousand. Oh, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah, that was amazing. They're um, the Goldmans. They do the Goldman Prize, which is a big um, environmental prize. And yeah, that that was pretty. They just stepped forward because it was talking. Yeah, about I remember I saw it on Twitter, spent. and I sent it to Patricia. I'm like, oh my god, it was um, around Christmas time. I want to say it was amazing. Wow. Have you heard from other people, from parents who have had sick kids? And oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and one of the most touching, th- I don't want to leave on a sad note, but a, a touching thing was our sound editor, who was amazing. He was quitting his job down here to move back up to be by his parents. And he said the reason he stayed here an extra month was to work on this movie because his, his sister had gotten a wish. She had ended up dying. Um, but she, it was the only, they took a family trip to Las Vegas, and it was the only family trip they had ever had. And they said that it was the memories from that trip that really stuck with them mm-hmm. now all these years later. Later. And so it was really touching, even you know, and put it really in a squarely important place to hear his story too. Because even though we know it's positive for most families now, it's not for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I did love how they talked about how they hadn't had a chance to take too many family trips, and so that's yeah. why yeah. they kind of created the whole city os- aspect. Because it, I mean, it could have right. been something done in a park. Right. And I don't. Yeah. And saying. they have less than a thousand people in their town. So yeah. Miles had never seen. A thousand people in one place. I mean, hundreds of people in one place. Let alone he that. He took to it so easily, just like waving <laughs> to people and doing his little swagger. <laughs> He's so cute. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>